In this video, we're going to look at five questions that will cover everything we have looked at so far. On the right hand side, I have written down the main things that we have looked at in the last couple of videos. The first thing I've written down is the complementary rule, which is the one that says that sin and cos are equal to each other as long as their two angles are adding up to 90 degrees. Then the next thing I've got is the special triangles, which can be used if you have a 45 or a 30 or a 60 degree angle. And then, of course, we've got the cos diagram, sorry, cost diagram. Something I haven't mentioned, I'll just like to quickly mention, sometimes, as in with example number one, you're going to end up with cos 180. Now, cos 180 can't be reduced because it's, 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 we call this one, or I like to call it a extreme point or a boundary point because it is at the 180. It's not somewhere in between 90 and 180, and it's not in between 180 and 270. So for those ones, or another one would be sin or cos of 90, or sin of cos of 270, or sin of cos of 360, what you can do with those is you just type that in on your calculator, okay? And that will just give you a value. All right, so let's start with number one. So in number one, it starts off with the cos of 180, and so that's a boundary point. So you just type it in on the calculator, and it's going to give you minus 1. Okay, so I'm going to type in minus 1. Then I'm going to put a little dot, because I know that it's times. And then I'm going to look at the tan of 360 minus beta. Now beta, in all our other previous videos, we looked at x. It doesn't really matter. It's the same thing. So the first thing is to locate 360 minus. Well, that's over here in quadrant number four. And so we can safely say that that's going to become tan beta. But tan is negative in that quadrant, so we'll add a little minus over there. Put another dot just to remind ourselves that the next thing is all times. Sin 90 plus. Ah, now here's one with a 90 plus. Remember that one part of the last video? We had sin 90 plus, cos 90 minus, cos 90 plus, and sin 90 minus. There were those four that you have to memorize. Well, this one simply becomes cos of beta. All right. And then in the line at the bottom, it's the sin of 100, minus 180 plus beta beta, which does not look like anything on the cost diagram, and so what we can do is add 360, okay? So what you're going to end up having there is the sin of minus 180 plus beta plus 360. You could then put the like terms together, and you're going to end up with beta plus 180, or 180 plus beta, because when you plus, the order doesn't matter. And so that takes us to quadrant number three. And so we can say sin beta, but then we know that sin is negative in quadrant three, and so we put a little minus. And so what I like to tell students to do now is to get rid of all the negatives. So we know that this negative, well, in fact, this is the better way. So we know that this, because there's only multiplication signs of here, we know that this is one big term. And so how many negatives can we see? We can see that there's one, two, three negatives, okay? So all of those negatives are going to combine, and because it's an odd number, you're going to end up with a final answer that is negative, okay? And so we're going to end up with a negative answer, and so now I'm just going to fill everything else in, and there we go. Then, something that I haven't mentioned yet, but something you're probably seeing in class at the moment, is that tan is the same as sin over cos. And so we can rewrite that tan as, that. oh, that minus is not for the tan, it's just some minus in the front, so don't even worry about that. Sin over cos times by cos beta, so this is all at the top, and then sin beta. Now, forget about the sin beta at the bottom. Let's just focus in on this top part over here. That cos beta at the bottom over there will now cancel with that cos beta at the top. Okay, so those have now cancelled. And so we can end up with minus sin beta over sin beta. 
and so your final answer, if those now cancel, will be minus 1. Moving on to number 2. So cos 240, now if you remember from the previous video, cos 240, all you do is you have to try to reduce that. So you locate 240. Now 240 would be somewhere over here, and so you would rewrite it as 180 plus something. Well, 180 plus 60 gives you 240. Then there's a plus cos 120. Cos 120, well, the 120 would be in the second quadrant, and so we'd rewrite it like that. 180 minus 60 gives you 120 all over. This one's a bit weird. It's just got a, one, a 240 plus a 120 in brackets. Well, that's just 360. Okay. Okay, moving on to the next step of the question. So because this is something on the cost diagram, we can just simplify that to cos 60. If any of this doesn't make sense, then you need to watch the previous video, which covers all of this in detail. And then because cos is negative in that quadrant, we'll put a little minus. Okay, then we have a plus. Then because this part here is on the cost diagram, we can just call it cos 60. But because of the fact that cos is negative in quadrant 2, we'd put a little minus over there. We'll take care of this plus and minus next in the next step. And then cos 360. Now, 360 is an extreme point or a boundary point. It's not in between 90 and 0 or 360 and 270. It is, an, it is on the boundary. And so you just type that in on the calculator and you'd get an answer of 1. All right. Now what I would like to do is just simplify that plus and that minus that is next to each other. Plus and a minus is a minus. Oh, right. Now, in this example, we're not going to count the minuses and make it a plus or like what we did in the previous one. Because in number 1, that was all one term because everything was separated by a times. But in number 2, there is a plus in between and so this is not one term so now we just add or subtract like terms but let's first simplify so cos 60 can be simplified because it's a special angle so we come to our special triangles over here and we see what the cos of 60 is well the cos of 60 if you look at adjacent over hypotenuse is a half and so what we're going to end up with at the top is minus a half minus another half over one Minus a half minus a half is minus 1, and that divided by 1 just gives us a final answer of minus 1. Now moving on to number 3. So number 3 starts off with an interesting one. It's the sin. I'm going to do this one separately. Sin x minus 90. In one of the previous videos, we had a look at this one, and it's one of the complicated ones. So what we did is we took out a negative as a common factor, which left us with 90 minus x. Then we knew that there was some identity that went like this. Through various reasons that I did show in a previous video, we found out that that equals to that over there. And so what we have to do is picture this x and this 90 minus x as the same thing. And that will help us to try and determine what this should become. So moving one step down over here, this minus appears to jump to the front, just like this one did over here. And then we'd be left with the sin of 90 minus x. And then the sin of 90 minus x is cos x. And so we're going to be left with negative cos x for that expression over there. And so I'm going to carry on the sum over here. So it's minus cos x times, I'm going to put the dot there because now we see that there is a times over there. Sin of 180 plus x. Well, 180 plus x is on the diagram. And so I'm just going to say sin x. But sin is not positive in that quadrant. So I'm just going to put a negative over there. And then this is all over. Tan of 180 plus x just becomes tan x. And then here we've got something that says the cos squared of 180 minus x. So what I tell students to do with this is to ignore the square for now and just do cos 180 minus x. Well, 180 minus x is on the cost diagram, and so we can say cos x. But cos is negative in that quadrant, so then we'll put a minus. 
But then we need to remember that that whole expression, so I'm going to put a bracket in that whole expression, needs to be squared. Okay, so we'll we'll simplify that at the in the next step. So what we're going to be left with is minus cos x at the top times minus sin x. Let me just make a little dot there. Over tan x times by so that's a little dot. So minus cos x, if you square it, it just becomes a positive cos squared x because a negative squared becomes a positive. Now what we can do, because we have one big term, there's no pluses and minuses separating terms. There's just dots which are acting as times. We can count the number of negatives. There's two of them. And so the final answer is going to be positive. So then what we can do is write it as cos x times by sin x at the top. I'm now going to rewrite the tan x as sin x over cos x times by cos squared x. Now what we're going to do is just zoom into the bottom and what we'll find is that one of these cos one of these causes will cancel with one of these over here. And so that expression, that whole expression, is going to simplify to the following. So I'm just going to write the top part as it currently is. And then we're going to left, be left with a sin x at the bottom times by a cos x. Okay, because there's one cos x left over from there. And so now we can just cancel vertically. So sin cancels with sin, cos cancels with cos, and we're left with an answer of 1. Moving on to number 4. Cos of 150, well, that can simply be reduced. 150 degrees is in quadrant 2, so we have to rewrite it as if it's in quadrant 2, which has 180 minus. Now, 180 minus what gives you 150? Well, that's just minus 30. Tan 225, well, the 225 is in quadrant number 3, so we'll rewrite it as 180 plus 45. And then the sin 20 will just leave it as it is. Because there's nothing we can do at the sin 20. Because it's already less than 90 degrees. And so it can't be simplified or reduced any further. Cos of 110. Well, 110 is in quadrant number 2. So we will rewrite it as 180 minus 70. Because that equals 110. And then the sin of 300. 300 is in quadrant number 4. So we'll rewrite it as 360 minus 60. Each of those expressions is now in a particular quadrant, and so we can just reduce them fairly easily. So cos 180 minus 30 just becomes cos 30, but because cos is negative in quadrant 2, we'll put a minus in the front, then put a little times. Tan of 180 plus 45, well, that's in quadrant number 3, and so we can just write that as tan 45. We still don't really know what we're going to do with the sin of 20. That's not a special angle, and it's already reduced, so we'll just leave that alone for now. Cos of 180 minus 70, well, that just becomes cos 70. But because it's in the second quadrant, cos is negative. And then the sin of 360 minus 60 just becomes sin 60. But because sin is negative in quadrant 4, it will be a negative. Now if we look, we have one big term because everything is separated with the multiplication. And so we can cancel or count the negatives. There are three of them. And so the final answer is going to be a negative. And so I'm going to put a negative over here. Then we see cos 30. Now 30 is a special triangle. So you would come up here to your special triangle and find the cos of 30. And if you did that, you're going to get square root 3 over 2. 45 for tan is also a special triangle. And if you did that, you're going to get 1 over 1. Sin 20, we still don't know what to do because it's not a special angle, but it has been reduced. So we can't really do anything with that for now. The same with cos 70. Sorry, that negative isn't there. We said that the final answer is going to be a negative. Then if we look at the sin of 60, we know that that's a special angle. And so that's going to be, if you do that, that's square root of 3 over 2. OK, I'm going to cancel these square root threes over two, square root 3 over 2 for now. And so what we will be left with is minus 1 
sin 20 over the cos of 70. But then we should remember the complementary rule, which says that sin and cos are the same as long as their angles, when added together, gives 90. And these do give 90. And so these two are actually the same. And so the final answer is minus 1. And then moving on to the last question for this video, it starts off with the sin of 180 minus theta. And so we know that that's an easy one because that's on our special, I mean, that's on our cast diagram. And so that just becomes sin theta and sin is positive in that quadrant. The next one is the cos of 90 plus theta. Remember, that's a special one. That's one where we looked at that about two videos ago where there were four of them that had 90s in them. And those you just have to memorize. But that one becomes the negative sin of theta. At the bottom, if you look carefully, we have a cos 90 plus cos theta within a bigger bracket. Now, cos 90 itself is one of the boundary angles, right? It's, it's not in between anything it is 90 and so if you type that in on the calculator cos 90 is 0 okay then we've got a cos theta over here so we'll just leave that there's nothing we can do there then within the next bracket we've got another cos 90 and so we can just make that a 0 and then we have another cos theta all right so at the top we're going to end up with minus sin squared theta because you've got a sin times a sin. At the bottom in the first bracket that's just going to be cos theta and in the second bracket it's going to be minus cos theta. And so at the bottom you're going to end up with minus cos squared theta. Now here we have one term because it's just something at the top and something at the bottom. So the two minuses we can add them together to make two minuses. And two minuses is actually a positive. And so we left with sin squared theta divided by cos squared theta, which can be written as tan squared theta, because sin divided by cos is tan. And that's the end of this video.